The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome on the fifth and final midweek Lenten service. For those of you who have been following us, you know these are a kind of mock trial of the different characters that appear in the life of Jesus as he moves inescapably to the cross. The case before you this evening, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is that of Barabbas. As you may know, Jesus' path crossed with the prisoner after Barabbas had already been convicted of multiple crimes. As such, today's hearing is slightly different. Rather than a trial to determine guilt or innocence, this is a clemency hearing for Barabbas. Only one person can be released, Jesus or Barabbas. It's up to you to decide which prisoner is to be pardoned. All rise, the court is now in session. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. With the whole church, let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O faithful Lord, we have rebelled against you over and over again through our thoughts, words, and deeds. Yet you continue to proclaim us as your own because you took our place on the cross we deserved. Help us to live as your freed followers, no longer shackled by the bonds of sin death, and evil, but released to share your saving message of new life with others. 
allow us to lead others to you that they too may know the joy of knowing you. Amen. Amen. reading is from the 15th chapter of John. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But all these things they will do to you on account of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have been guilty of sin, but that now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen and hated both me and my father. But the word that is written in their law must be fulfilled. They hated me without a cause. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading of the charges from the 27th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd anyone prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting at the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas. 
Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas, And having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Return to the Lord your God, who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Glory to you, O Lord. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, for the first time in this series of trials, my job appears to be fairly easy. I could rest my case and not even make an argument at all. And the action you should take would be just as obvious. Unless you're just plain stubborn and would stand in the way of justice being done, you know as well as I do that Barabbas is guilty. He's been convicted of multiple crimes already. We read in court documents that the defendant's crimes were so heinous and public that he became a a renowned person who murdered and led an insurrection. He's exactly the kind of person that makes you bring your children inside at night. He's the reason you lock your doors and he's already in jail. So this clemency hearing tonight is a sham, it truly is. What we have on one side is a teacher confessed by some to be the Messiah, the King of the Jews. A lofty claim, I know, but we've seen the miracles he's performed. Witnesses saw him raise a man from the dead. At the very least, he's a man who acts with the power of God and teaches with the authority of one sent by God. The other prisoner is a convicted murderer. Even Pilate admitted that. He knows that to be true. He has announced that Jesus is innocent. The governor knows no crime has been committed. You have done very well in our time together, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. You've adjudicated fairly and have been a vital part of our legal system. And there's no reason why today should be any different. You simply must free Jesus of Nazareth. As a jury, as an honorable, honest people, your integrity depends on this decision. We have been asking the question for five weeks now. What law has Jesus broken? The Jewish leaders, Pilate, those who just don't like Jesus, none of them has brought even one single accusation that has merit. The burden of proof, the responsibility to prove their claim is not on me, ladies and gentlemen. It's on the defense, because as far as any reasonable person can tell, Jesus is innocent and should be set free. Barabbas is guilty and should remain incarcerated. As my counterpart comes up and begins his argument, I ask you to listen critically. Listen carefully to the reasoning behind his argument because he's attempting to do the unthinkable. Free a murderer and convict an innocent man. I see no way that you can agree to that. Do not let yourselves be swayed. Let the truth prevail. Barabbas is guilty, and you must keep him behind bars, if not for yourselves, then for your children and your children's children. Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, as we conclude our final trial here today, you're faced with the toughest case yet. Each trial has been preparation for this one. But there's a problem. Each week you have come to realize how much you have in common with the person on trial, and today is no different. 
The man on trial today, Barabbas, is a murderer, insurrectionist, thief, and the leader of a rebellion. Your job here today isn't to decide his guilt or innocence. Today is a clemency hearing. You must make the choice to pardon Barabbas or to free Jesus of Nazareth. Only one of the prisoners can be set free. You must answer Pilate's question. The choice is yours. It is one you must make. Your decision will decide what happens in the coming week. You might be thinking to yourself, hey now, sometimes I'm like Peter and deny Jesus. Or maybe you're thinking, sure, I've fallen asleep on the job once or twice in my faith, but don't tell me I'm a convicted criminal. I haven't murdered anyone, much less stolen or led a rebellion. There was always a way out of the previous cases, as my colleague tried to convict otherwise faithful people who were caught up in their mistakes. But there is no way out of making the tough choice tonight. Let me tell you why. From the very beginning, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden listened to the lies of the tempter and ate the forbidden fruit. Everything changed. Since Adam, you have all been afflicted with the same internal, undeniable predisposition to choose yourselves over others to choose rebellion over reverence. From the very moment of your birth, you were not just falling away, but you were running away from the things of God. Unable to do anything by your own power or will, you have all run headlong into those things which God not only forbids, but those that demand eternal death as punishment. Here again, the words of scripture, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If you kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Just like Barabbas, there is no way you can stand before the Lord in your sin. So, not only are you equally as guilty, equally as deserving of death as Barabbas, now you must decide if he will be pardoned. So we are brought to the crux of the situation. Just as the crowd gathered in Jesus' trial had to dis answer the question of who was to be released, so you too must answer the question. Just like the crowd gathered before Pilate, you have an agenda. You want something. You would like to set Jesus free because you know this is all a sham due to fake blasphemy charges made up by the Jewish leaders who didn't like their power questioned. You know what will happen if you don't release Jesus. They're demanding the death penalty crucifixion. Surely an innocent man shouldn't have to endure that. But if Jesus were to be gone, then there really wouldn't be anyone around to demand your reverence. You could finally be your own God and make your own decisions free of conscience and guilt. Truly free. Or so you think. The reality of the situation is that there is an ultimate truth. There is a God in heaven who created you and everything you see. And his divine justice demands a payment for sin, and that payment is death. Something must be done about your sin. So you see, here's the truth. It might feel wrong. You might not like it but you really do not have a choice. You must 
release Barabbas. You need Jesus on that cross. You can feel the sin dripping from your lives. And there's only one way to deal with that sin. Jesus, who is totally innocent, must take your place and suffer the penalty of death for you. Barabbas is not innocent, far from it, but neither are you. But the choice is clear. You have to pardon the prisoner Barabbas. He will go free and Jesus will go to his death. Your sin is the reason Jesus is here on trial. And now you must cast the vote that will send him to his death. But take comfort in this. Although you make the unthinkable decision to free a murderer, remember these words about Jesus. He became sin, who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus do, does all of this willingly for you. He stands before Pilate. He is nailed to the cross. He bleeds and dies because God the Father can't stand to be without you. Through this great sacrifice, your fortunes have been reversed. Through this great exchange, Jesus takes your sins unto himself and you put on his righteousness. You are forgiven and restored to new life. Yet you are left wondering why. Why would Jesus go through with this? Why would God send him to earth to be treated this way? Listen again to these words explaining the Apostles' Creed. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. So listen closely, friends. Here is your answer to the question of why. Explanation of the creed continues. That I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. So you see, you must pardon Barabbas, and in doing so, you must declare Jesus guilty. He must go to the cross in your place so that he might be the firstborn from the dead and win you the salvation he so greatly desires for you. It's going to be gruesome. An innocent man will die. But three days later, your Savior will rise. And the plan God set in motion with the promise of a savior to Adam and Eve will be complete. Through his death, you will be given life and you will be declared not guilty. Thank you, Your Honor. Nothing further.
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Almighty, Almighty God, God, we confess to you the rebellious sin that still wars against our desire to live holy lives. Have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. It was because of your sins that Jesus went to the cross and died. But thanks be to God, the work of God did not end there, because his word tells us, we were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of God, the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Jesus overcame sin, the death, and the devil for you. Having heard your confession, I announce this verdict. Because Jesus died in your place and rose again, you are forgiven and freed to live a life of gratitude and faith in Jesus. Depart in confidence and peace because of Jesus' death and resurrection, you stand before God as his beloved and forgiven child. You are not guilty. Lord Jesus, sometimes our hearts are glazed over and hardened by grief. We wonder in the middle of our pain whether we can trust you or not. Sometimes we even wonder if you are our enemy. Help us take a long look at the hand you stretch out to us. Help us to make a choice for faith instead of despair. Help us to see that the hand you offer us is one that is scarred with pain. Help us to accept the comfort given by Jesus' bleeding love. Because we can't see you, O oh God, help us to listen and listen closely for your words give hope to the hopeless, courage to the fearful, and joy to the downcast. We trust your words of forgiveness, knowing that you have taken our place on the cross, that we might be freed. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope and of the glory of God. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you all. Amen.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Sharing God's love by living our faith and serving the world. Thanks be to God.